Thank you for joining us for another session of Beer Nerds. Beer is a worldwide phenomenon. Obviously, the different styles that we drink all come from different parts of the world. And to be able to review that, to talk about that, to get different brewers um, on our radio show, um, to film and, and get some audio from different places that we've uh, been to, as well as you, beer nerds. We need you to go into different local breweries where you're at. And I can set that up for you, actually. I'll send emails and, and get you set up for that. The good thing about that is, A, you'll get free beer. Um, and t-shirts. And t-shirts if you're good. <laughs> the county was very awesome. Um, you get free beer. You get the brewer's kind of uh, take on what they're doing, the brewer's point of view, and it actually opens up your mind to a lot of different brew styles. Now I'm going to be going back into kind of the Pilsner, the Lager, the, the Dunkel, and I'm going to start looking at that because I think I've overlooked some things because it's so common here in the United States. So I'm going to go back through uh, different, uh, you know, different breweries versions of that because I think that's something that we've really missed. Um, and uh, you know, we can talk about the latest beer crazes, the sours, the, um, the bourbon barrels, the different stouts and all that good stuff. And I think it might be beneficial. So um, as a response to this video, I want you guys to um, post what your thoughts are of this and how willing you are to go out to your local breweries and do what we're doing. All we're doing is putting a camera on a stand. And having fun. And having fun. Talking. I have the questions already that you can ask, but you can freestyle, which is great because I'd rather have what your take is than what my take is. So I'm with Dennis and Cam, and uh, we are at Franconia in McKinney, Texas. And uh, why don't you introduce yourself and who you are and, and uh, all of that. Well, uh, I'm Cam Horn. I'm head brewer here at Franconia. I've been here for about five and a half of the seven years that we've been open. So, okay. very good. A, and he still hands on. Yeah, it's good. I'm always getting dirty back in the brewer. <laughs> <I'm wrong with laughs> so, what's your name? My name is Dennis. I'm the owner, founder, and brewmaster for Franconia Brewing Company. Very good. Very good. Well, we have some. Uh, questions that I'm sure all the nerds are wanting to uh, ask you and some of these questions actually came from them. They wanted to hear some of these things so we'll, we'll get right into it. That sounds great. We're really fun. Yeah. <laughs> what was the catalyst or the beer that made you guys want to become brewers? Um, it wasn't a particular beer in my case. Uh, I was born in a brewer's family. I didn't have a choice to do anything else so uh, it wasn't really about any particular beer or I, I just grew up with it, so yeah. I'm a fifth generation brewmaster and uh, started brewing, working in the brewery with six years and started brewing my first batch at the family brewery when I was 12 years back in Germany. So Very good. How long have you been here? Uh, I'm here in the States now since a little bit over 11 years okay. and opened from Konya pretty much exactly seven years ago. Seven years ago. Very mm -hmm. good. How about you, Kim? <laughs> Uh, I grew up in the Dallas area, and growing up in the Dallas area, there wasn't good beer here until Franconia and yeah. some of the other, you know, RAR on the other breweries that yeah. opened up, and that was pretty much it for a long time, and before that there was nothing good here, so uh, I actually had some buddies that moved up to Colorado uh, shortly after high school, and going up and visiting them, they introduced me to New Belgium and all the new breweries that were opening up there in Colorado, which kind of opened my eyes to what good beer could be. Yeah. You couldn't get it down here in Texas, so me and a friend of mine started making it in our uh, in our oh, apartment. Cool. Yeah. And uh, one thing led to another. I went to Seville Institute up in Chicago, okay. which just happened to be the sister school of Domans, where he went to school in Germany. Uh, knocked on his door as soon as I finished Seville, and he let me work for free for six months. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, kind of so yeah, I just slowly kind of worked my way up the ladder from extract on the stove till where I am now. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so, uh, the next question is when did you start brewing and you answered some of that, but just a little bit, uh, um, you know, po more poignant. See, I started brewing in 2006, 2007 is when I first, you know, got my first homebrew kit yeah. and I think started doing it. So, I've been doing it for about nine years now. Okay. How long did it take you to kind of be proud of the beer you made? 
Uh, well, it didn't take me long at all. But <laughs> you make something that's drinkable, and yeah. one, you know, if one of your friends is even willing to put down a pint of it, that makes you proud of it. That is cool. So, I mean, it wasn't too long before I was crafting my own recipes and cool. said, forget these kids, and started doing, you know, kind of steamrolled, and yeah. eventually worked its way into a, a nice cake. Cool. Yeah, what about you? Well, like I said, I started working in the family business when I was six years old. So, I mean, now people will figure out how old I am. Um, that was 1979, mm -hmm. and I did my first batch of beer in uh, 1985. Wow, okay. Do you remember, well, I'm sure you remember what it was, what style was it? I do not remember what it was. I'm sure we, I'm sure we probably could find the brew log, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know really what it was. So Franconia really has a uh, kind of five generations behind it. Yeah, so it started with my great great grandfather, eighteen hundred, who is also the gentleman featured in our logo, yeah. and yeah, from there just just went wild. Yeah, yeah, your Oktoberfest is one of my favorites. So <laughs> have you tried the double? I haven't. You haven't? Mm -hmm. well, we've got a surprise for you. Yeah, we've got a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So yeah, I, I was even telling him the other day. Uh, I mean, if I were to be able to only drink one beer for the rest of my life, it would be Dunkel. Yeah. So it's just it's so easy drinking, mm -hmm. but you get a lot of character and flavor right. from it. So yeah. well, my pants are getting tighter. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So besides you, because I know your biggest influence was your family, and mm -hmm. um, but who is the biggest influence on your choice to become a brewer? Obviously, it's your family, fifth generation. So Cam, what? Who was your biggest influence? Um, honestly, leave me out. Well, I'm like, <laughs> my biggest influence as a brewer is by far and away than him. I've learned more from him than I have from you know the schooling and, yeah. and homebrewing and everything. But to become a brewer, it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for my wife. Yeah. Um, I was just homebrewing, you know, at that point at least once a week. Yeah. I mean, we had beer stockpiled, and I was listening to homebrew podcasts and yeah. everything else. And got home one day and was like, hey, I just listened to this podcast and they interviewed this guy and he's the president of a brewing school. Did you know there's such a thing as brewing school? And she's like, well, you really love doing this yeah. and you're spending a lot of money on it. So why don't you try to make some money from doing it? So <laughs> we uh, took our tax return that year, uh, enrolled in, uh, in brewing school That's awesome. and away I went. Yeah, wives are good in that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, so I hear so many stories from homebrewers a lot of times, you know, the wives kicking them outside, yeah. kicking them out to the garage. I mean, if it wouldn't have been for her completely yeah. supporting it, I would have never been able to do it. So. It's, it goes both ways. Um, it's either, you know, why are you wasting your time on this mm -hmm. uh, and stop drinking so much? Yeah. Or it's, <laughs> I'm totally for it. And you know, the first person to taste your beers and all that kind of stuff. So I think yeah, that's yeah. I mean, she used to, she was my bottle capper for the long one. Really? Sorry, well, until, until awesome. I switched over to the keg and my beers. Yeah, she was my <laughs> bottle capper for my first six or seven batches. That was awesome. <laughs> and so having a higher quality um, beer like yours, it's a session beer, like you said. You can get sit down, and in fact, Shane and I have sat down in this house several times and just had a, a session with uh, Franconia and a lot of different local beers. So. Um, we appreciate you guys being a, uh, a session maker because yes. uh, I have lots of sessions. <clears throat> Any accomplishments, awards that you're most proud of, um, you know, that you guys have achieved since you opened the brewery? Well, uh, interesting question, especially today, we just talked about <laughs> it. Uh, we got an award right, we just we got back, award right back there. <laughs> uh, yeah, pull, pull it out. I mean, there. You know, I think there there are two two different kinds of there, there are two different kinds right now of awards. One is the media based awards, like uh, you know papers and and social media and obviously like this stuff. You know, all those new papers have their best stuff now. Um, and then you have the you have the beer competitions um, and splitting both both of them apart. Um, we just got this delivered today. The the Blitzy. So, which is from the Blitz Weekly. Um, okay. Blitz Weekly, we won that twice, I think. Uh, last year, I actually think we did won the Reader's Choice as well. Uh, we got the Dallas Best from, was it the D Magazine? Uh, Dallas Observer. Dallas Observer. Maybe the Magazine. Years awesome. back. I, I don't know which one it was. Uh, that's pretty much it, like I said, we don't, we don't participate. What is your personal favorite beer that you guys have made? Like if you could just bring up, it sounds like the one you made now. Uh, the one that... Well, like I said, the, the Dunkel, I mean, that would be my go-to every day, all day beer, just because it's 
such a, you know, like I said, sessionable beer. I, mean, I could drink a ton of them and never get tired of drinking it. Uh, what about you? Uh, I'm a wheat, wheat beer guy. I grew up with wheat beers. I love them. So I think our wheat beer is, is really good. Yeah, I just like the style. And if I go out and Franconia wheat is not on tap, then I just order whatever wheat is there. So. Yes. What is in your refrigerator at, at the house? You just said Franconia. So any other breweries that you drink that is <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Um, a surprise for some probably. I mean, I got I got every bottled beer from Franconia in my refrigerator. Uh, I have right now a six pack of Spot and Premium Lager in my refrigerator. Okay, what about you? Um, my refrigerator probably looks a little bit different than his. Uh, <laughs> I, I've got a beers that I've had in that refrigerator for years and years and years. I mean, right now the Franconia that I have at home is Franconia Dunkel. Imagine that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've got. Got 1995 Chimay Grand Reserve. Oh. I've got um, you know old old beers from Avery Brewing Company, uh, Russian River Brewing Company. Yeah. What kind of breweries are you guys working on right now? Anything new that? Uh... Uh, well, we're about to have our brand new Pilsner come out. Um, we've done a Pilsner every well, not maybe not every spring, but the past several really yeah, yeah, the past, yeah. past several years we've had a Pilsner come out, and we've uh, completely revamped the recipe for this year. And what, what's the name of it? Going to be. Just Pilsner. Frank, we're all, yeah, we're not fancy with yeah, our, we're not our fancy with naming, our names. but it does have a new hop um, that we're putting into the lemon drop hop that uh, not a lot of breweries even have access to yet. We're not planning to use it year round. We really just uh, used okay. it for our spring seasonal and decided to use it for our Pilsner and change the recipe up to really feature the, the hops in the beer. I mean, we could brew any kind of beer with it, but I think a Pilsner is a good beer to feature the hops. It's more a lighter beer style, so take the malt backbone a little bit out of it and bring okay. the hops a little bit in the front. So. What do you think the next kind of craze is going to be as far as beers go? I think it's already showing. Yeah. I think the next craze is going to be sours. You can kind of see a progression through what craft beer drinkers are enjoying. I, I think you can kind of look towards the West Coast a lot of time to see where yeah, we're going to go so. next because they've had their industry established for a lot longer than we have. And those, so they went through the, the huge hoppy big IPA yeah. craze and it's like Imperial Stouts and yeah. stuff like that and then it goes to sour beers. And now what you're seeing a lot of coming out of the West Coast at least are session beers. I mean, yeah. You've got your all day IPA, and your session IPA, and your anytime IPAs. And I mean, it's West Coast and they're all IPAs, Sierra but it's still, they're all, they're, they're starting to do session beers and all these craft beer drinkers over there that have been drinking craft beer for 20 years are like, they're finally getting ready for something that's not 8, 9, 10% alcohol yeah. and they still want a lot of character and a lot of flavor. Sure. So I think now where we are is we're getting through that, we, we, we've had the hop craze, uh, we're getting out of the big, strong bourbon barrel, whatever craze, and I think sours is next, and hopefully, eventually, it works its way. <laughs> Session beers where we will reign supreme. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Well, uh, just want to close it out and just see if do you guys have any anything else you want to add? We're glad about things like this because this is obviously what creates the community and. Uh, helps educate the people where we yeah. earlier said that that's a challenge too so it's uh, it has a lot of educational value behind it and uh, we're, we're just we're just glad to be part of this community right now well and people that come to those kinds of event, events and they can get a beer they can't get anywhere else <coughs> makes you makes beer nerds feel special yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it really does it's just like yeah. well yeah well I had this and you'll <laughs> never be able to have it <laughs> <laughs> So I think the guys outside of uh, Texas are going to be a little jealous about mm -hmm. this because you know beer nerds they like the yeah. purity law yeah. um, they they do like the other flavor flavors just like you guys do it's fun to drink fun to experiment yeah. but when it comes to your brewing you guys are purists you do it the way that you've done it for five generations and uh, you obviously love it and that's well, that comes we love it and that's why we do it it may turn out that it's the wrong thing to do but it's for everybody who wants it. You know, yeah. it's not just for me or for us here, it's for everybody who wants it. Well, cool, I appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously we'd like to take a look around the brewery with you guys. Yeah. Yes, uh, we'll go out there, we'll give you some triple dunkle and maybe some of that uh, okay. little ice bar, a little sample. And I can tell you right away, you just smell a brewery. You can smell the hops and the malt. It's fantastic. I love this smell. It's a bit cold out there.
You can only get at the brewery level that you, as a beer nerd, need to go to a brewery to experience these things that you can't get just by going to a store. But don't get me wrong, you go to a good beer store and there's lots of beers, lots of possibilities. But you go to a brewery, you get a personal sense of what goes yeah. into the beer. It definitely makes you appreciate it more, no doubt. Absolutely. I mean, Especially with free t-shirts. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you could do this as a radio show. I think it would. Yeah, no doubt. Just sit here and talk about just beer and some crap. Talk about whatever. You're still listening. See, America. See. <laughs> <laughs> we just get here with like two six packs and just start drinking a beer yeah, and start talking. Yeah, we review the beer first, and then we drink it. Exactly. So I want to I want to go ahead and tell you that uh, according to the Surgeon General's, women should not drink alcoholic beverages during pregnancy. Mm. Because of the risk of birth effects, unless they're in Europe. Well, and the cool, th the the bad thing about that is, is they'll be born with beer goggles. Mm. So, you know, that's a bad thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies. Whoa. If you're born with beer goggles, you know what I'm talking about. Because there's some ugly dudes out there too. True. Of course. <laughs> and if you're <laughs> ugly, I'm sorry. <laughs> but sometimes the truth is. You look like this. Ugly. <laughs> hey, baby. No? no? Okay. That was ugly. It was ugly. <laughs> that was definitely ugly. 